We are live at the SL Digital Media Podcast, Facebook Live, but we're streaming to YouTube also tonight. It's movie director, record label owner. She got a couple things that she's going to add to this. It's Lena Shockley. Tonight's guest is Lena Shockley. Lena, give them your journey and what you're doing currently and how are you going to deal with the next phase of COVID-19? Okay. Yes. Well, um, I own a TV and radio show in New York. Uh, got over 350,000 live worldwide. Uh, okay. I also, uh, have, I'm the VP vice president of the East coast division of mountain dog entertainment. Um, the president always puts me in charge free reign of hiring and uh, choosing talent and entertainment. Uh, I do a lot of networking parties. I've been doing this over 15 years. Uh -huh. And uh, I have artists that have opened for Two Chains, French Montana, all types of different uh, A-list musicians. Oh, okay. And I've also developed actors, models, uh, artists of all types and put and them You're in basically the entertainment, basically. Yes. You're really entertainment. Yes. So, you know, okay, how long have you been doing what you've been doing with, because that's a lot of entertainment. You're entertaining right there. So how yes. long have you been doing it? Uh, I've been doing it for over 15 years. Um, you know, as a matter of fact, I had an entertainer come here yesterday to celebrate my birthday in New York, and she sang to the whole crowd out here. Oh, okay. In the COVID world, we had a birthday party for me outside. Uh, they opened over twenty thousand dollars worth of gifts for me. Oh wow! Uh, we celebrated the whole night, and then we had a gentleman who's a videographer who was filming, and he's been in movies and stuff. So you know, I, I hang out with an entertainment crowd of people usually. Yeah. And Pro poets, book authors, um, you name it. I can call somebody for you and, and get them anywhere you want to go. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you, you're saying that you're an owner of yeah. all these entities. Okay. How did yeah. you get started doing what you've been doing? Now, that, yeah. you know. I used to be a model. Um Many, many years ago, when I, I was a child model in okay. Denver, Colorado, uh, my family was involved with old school entertainers like Fred Williamson, Pam Greer, uh, Earth, Wind and Fire. Those types of people were uh, friends of the family. And mm -hmm. also, uh, my sister was also in the movie business back in the early 70s in California and she owned a uh, entertainment company, employment company, uh, hiring models and actors for entertainment and things like that. And so at the end of the day, um, you know, they trained me in the arts and in entertainment and it was exciting and fun. And, you know, we had a lot of um, awards and things like that. So I decided uh, that I wanted to get involved as an older person yeah. And um, later on, I brought my boyfriend out to New York, and uh, he liked New York. We got married. I went to Fashion Institute of Technology. You done did a lot. I mean, yeah, you yeah. you just yeah. keep going. You like I I, I I used to make toast. I used to make bread, <laughs> and then when I when I you just gonna keep going. I already see that. It, it ain't gonna stop. You know you you know what? You was gonna keep going too. So. You know, yeah. <laughs> so you've done a lot in your lifetime. You've done a yeah, lot in your lifetime. And, and it, it appears that, um, you know, you're still moving around and yeah. doing what you're doing. You know, from time to time, we would, we would you know, converse. And it's funny because yeah. you told me about doing a podcast. And yes. you, you were doing, I believe, a podcast. Or, or was that your TV station? Uh, that's, a, that's a live TV station, Rockland World Radio. Okay. And uh, Nyack, New York, and I also do a film festival there. Uh, I took a little break from the film festivals after my husband accidentally passed away. July oh, 20th. man, sorry to hear that. 
Thank you. And, uh, you know, it was a surprise death and, you know, we gave it a good send off and everything. So yeah. I decided to take a break from everything and go traveling. And the only thing I concentrated on was fashion shows and uh, concerts and uh, film producing. You oh, know? Okay. And so that helped me to heal and get myself back together. And so now we're going to open a brand new platform in the mall in Middletown. Oh, okay. and, and where, where is the mall at? Um, are you going to open uh, this? This is in Middletown, New York. Uh, Middletown, New York. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, way yeah. up there. Yeah, yeah. And you're going to be welcome to come on the stage and you oh, okay. know, talk about your career and what you do to help people in the entertainment industry and the sports industry, you know? Yeah. And uh, if you ever want to come out on one of the events and, and, and look yeah. for talent or, you know, talk yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're welcome to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you so, know, I, the way I did this was I knew a lot of people, period. Yes. Just a lot. I'm an entertainer also. So I've been a singer, right. songwriter, and I've been a DJ. So technically... Wow. I've done all of those and I've gotten close to doing the radio, but it was, you know, of course, if, if the people that was kind of representing you and, and was, they were basically in the way yeah. because we were supposed to do uh wired, wired 95, wired 96 in, in Philly. And yeah. what it was um, at the time we were doing like big reggaeton, um, parties, Latin parties. So I was actually on Latin radio before. I was a host, but I would be the American guy. They would bring in a Spanish guy. And from the the top DJs of the Spanish world from, uh, what's his name? DJ Cream was one at the time. (laughs) And Tony Toca, he came a couple of times. Wow. And yeah, so um, I had pictures of that. I don't even wow. know where they at. But yes. as far as me as a DJ, I've also DJ for Shaquille O'Neal. Um, yes. I did a lot of uh, um, uh, album release. I did actually. I did one twelve. Wow. Um, I did um, who else? Uh, Vivian Green. There was a couple connects that that got us the you know the, the jobs, and um, you know I knew a lot of the circuit in Philadelphia. I still do. You know, wow. it's all types of acts in Philly. Everybody's nice. out here doing what they're doing, you know. Um, but currently I'm in, involved in something dealing with IPs and nice. and music. And it's it's something really big. So um, you know, I've always been a part of entertainment mm-hmm. and had the mindset to do uh big business all along, you know, because big business is actually, uh, you know, sometimes you don't go to college for it. You actually got to learn it from a distance and then find out, oh, so that's because sometimes college can be deceiving. You can go to college and never become rich at all. You know what I mean? So I've seen that too many times, you know, where people Uh went to school and I'm like, wait a minute, you went to school for this, but aren't you doing that? And I'm like, that don't make no sense to me. So, you know, um, how I, how how I uh, look at college, college is just an institution where they have books and you can read on it, but it doesn't create um, what what I would say um, your destiny still, you know, uh, look at all the school teachers that could be in trouble, right? You know, they could really be in trouble, you know. And um, hopefully that's not the case because they're talking about going digital. That means a lot of people are going to lose jobs. It's and very bad. yeah, very so bad. so once again, I always try to put myself in a position to uh, be ahead of the game. I've always yeah. known about intellectual properties. Not many people are going to know that that language. But you've been seeing it every time you bought something online. That's so, right. you know, so um, so once I was involved in that, you know, that kind of gave me the, the you know, uh, uh, I opened my mind a little bit more yes. because, like I said, I know plenty of people that went to college 
Some yeah. have actually made it through and got the job. But then I said, I don't want to go to college and make just $50,000. <laughs> right. <laughs> I understand you. Like, I do that make any sense? Like, of I course. finally made it through. But I only get fifty thousand dollars if you're lucky. Yeah, you know yeah. if you're lucky. I've seen people go to college four years, talk about they getting their masters, but then when they get another job, the job keeps sending them to school. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm like, you're you've been going to school for twenty years. I have friends like that. Yeah, and you have an apartment, not a house, right? And it's. You not living like you to me. Yeah. You're not living the way you should be living. And right. and, and like I will always say, a hundred grand, 80, to 80, 90 to a hundred grand. Now you kind of like, okay, that's a nice little number there. Yes, yes. You know, I agree with you. 75 is a good number, but it's <laughs> You know, if you got a family, I hope y'all ain't eating a lot because yeah. you still got to have cars. It's true. You know, you know, if you don't own your house, here come that mortgage. And if you want to live in the suburbs, we're talking four grand. If your credit is good, it's still going to be like thirty five hundred. Hello. You know, so <laughs> so I keep telling people, you know, you still got to be able to generate some serious capital True. to live a certain way. Now I know you're in upstate New York, so I yeah. know you're doing okay. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so. I, I used to live in the city in Manhattan, you know. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Manhattan. Like that's <laughs> that's where like where the broke people where the broke people at. You know, in Manhattan. <laughs> I mean, but you know, it's like project like vibe and I didn't want to <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it was a lot of crime and everything back then in the 1980s and stuff. So I decided yeah. to come upstate, and it's so peaceful and beautiful. And I have bears outside, and I have uh, coyotes and wolves. And oh, you, know, you, you live in you live in where's living? Yeah, <laughs> but that's what that really is. That's living where they you know where where where's living at? Yeah, you know, that's what I, that's what that's my terminology. Of yes. living around animals, yeah, you're living where it's living, yes, you, you know. So, so just don't get caught by no bear, but there anyway, you go. <laughs> right? You're you right, know, whatever you're he right. wants, just tell him go right where he need to go and avoid yeah. you, you know. You but, were laughing because my friends were sitting watching a bear while we were opening the gifts and singing happy birthday, and he was just grubbing and grubbing i guess he came from the forest and he needed some extra food but he didn't harm anybody but just the fact that you get to see this giant bear hanging out i, like, I can't know. i really can't even imagine <laughs> seeing the, i mean you just acting like it ain't it's like some type of cat i'll send you some pictures it'll blow your mind man oh yeah, you put them on facebook you might get some <laughs> algorithm <laughs> right yeah so so, you know, so you're out there with Lion. So that was good that I used uh, a Jasmine Sullivan song, Lions. You know, I just could have just did Lions, Tigers, and Bears because she did a song <laughs> like that. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny because I'm part of a wildlife association and I brought one of my good friends, who's a book author, who yeah. was on my TV show uh, to Egypt and she's still there and she got married. She found a, a wildlife. Um, gentleman who likes to hunt wildlife. He's from a family of 10,000 people. I'm not allowed to mention his name. He's a very high profile gentleman and he catches lions and tigers and elephants and he's planning on helping us open a, a petting zoo here in, when we go to Florida yeah. next year and uh, wildlife preservation and we want to educate people on how not to kill the animals and you know why they're good for us and all this other yeah. stuff and so um, you really live in you know, that life you know yeah. you're living in life i want you to check because uh just uh oh sorry you can't really check on your phone i should have told you to get okay. your laptop because your laptop could have been the opposite but i did tag you 
I tagged yeah, you on I, it. I saw the tag. I saw that tag. Okay, then it's there then. Thank okay. You. Yeah. Thank so you. um, because what I try to tell people is, you know, just share it. You know, I'm not charging nobody to do the uh, interview. Yeah. Um, yes. but you know, I'm I'm putting things together that yes. will generate it anyway because I got it running on YouTube and and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So she left the screen for a second. She'll be back. But anyway, um, talking to Lena Shockley, movie director, record label owner. Um, and this is the SL Digital Media Podcast. There we go. And look, yeah. I kept it going professional. So if you ever need me, now, 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 now I, need to, I need you to hear this, though. Yeah. So it's obvious you know I can talk a little bit. Yes. Yeah. So actually, I've been doing music. But I've actually done commercials for, um, you know, your A1 artists, like yeah. All-Star Weekend. Yeah. I can't find the files because the way I do stuff is it just comes and I just turn it to that person. Gotcha. And, and I've actually done commercials for uh, Super Bowl parties. And, wow. And, and now listen to this. Had I been on radio myself personally, yes. Yes. I know a lot of people. You know, awesome. personally, if if I got there, it would be nice. crazy. Wow. And and then, um, you know, I even know a lot of the managers that have the artists. And wow. it's crazy because all I've ever done was connect to people if they yes. want me to connect to them. Because you know how yes. some people are. Yes. Some people are just, you know, got that law. Eh, you know, but that's cool. Yeah. Because right. I, you know, I meet so many other people. It really don't yeah. matter that that I even deal with them. Amen. Amen to that. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Let's now. Let's go on the road. Okay. I was have trying to ever, share it. I was trying to share it, and that's why you you might have seen a technical difficulty. I was going to try to share it while I was on the phone, but that didn't work out. So I saw. Oh I have to no, no, no! Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's because you needed at least a laptop. Got you. The phone. Whenever okay. you do stuff like this, because gotcha. you got to be on the one, you know, when the other person is talking, that's the chance to do it. So I did tag you while I was okay. doing it, but you, you, you're doing everything on your phone. That'll make it go gotcha. off. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah. So, but, but it'll be there no matter what. And, gotcha. um, okay. So you're saying that you said you've been since the eighties, you were in Manhattan. You lived in yeah. New York, Manhattan. Yes. How long have you done the industry, entertainment? Like the first, how long has that been? It sounds like oh, 20 years. It's been, it's been a very long time. Um, this is what happened in the bio. You know, I was 15 years old. I yeah. had a very uh, wealthy um, aunt, Rowana, and Uncle Chester. Okay. Uh, they yeah, because you ain't moving around like this with no, without no couple of dollars. I just I <laughs> didn't get around to that part. I was like, wait a minute, you doing this and that? It, it, it got to make some sense. <laughs> and they, they, they went to my mother's house, Gertrude uh, and Henry. Henry was a Swedish masseur and number one um, chiropractor of Colorado. He worked on the stars for many years. Uh -huh. As a child, I got to meet Fair Fawcett, um, all type of different folks. Yeah, actors. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You said Fair and, Fawcett. Uh, Farrah Fawcett, you know, she was my okay. idol. He, okay. he knew that. Yeah, 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 yeah. She, she had a moment. She had a moment. Um, yeah, yeah. So he introduced me to her. I used to love to watch the Charlie's Angels when I was a child. Yeah, and I great. still watch the old reruns of the Charlie's Angels. I mean, Charlie's <laughs> Angels, rather, rather uh, a young a young person probably even heard of it because they, they've had renditions of that yes. in cartoons. So it's exactly. not like it's not no... Yeah. So whoever created that really got paid because they were yeah. able to maneuver, um, you know, yeah. years out of that. I mean, I remember that cartoon. I mean, maybe in the early 2000s, it was still <laughs> floating around. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah and and I, I enjoyed the they had a, like a, a soap opera that was going on in the 1970s when I was a child. Uh -huh. and then when I was uh, in the early 80s, around 12 years old. My father said, I'm going to work on Farrah Fawcett this weekend. She's flying in, and I'm going to take her over to Aspen, Colorado. 
And uh, would you like to meet her? And I said, absolutely. And so, yeah. you know, I met her as a child and I said, you know, you're an idol of mine and all that yeah. jazz. He used to, you know, introduce me to all the stars. So my uh, relatives knew I was infatuated with coming to New York as a child. Yeah. And I wanted to be a fashion designer and I was always drawing all these fashions. And there you go with that list again. <laughs> <laughs> that lets us keep growing. Fashion designer, <laughs> art, yeah. what else? Kept going. I, I went, I went um, and got uh, accepted to FIT, which is like an Ivy League school for fashion design. Yeah. It still uh -huh. exists on West 27th Street in New York, New York. And so my aunt and uncle were always traveling to Paris and uh, different parts of Europe and New York. And they were always shopping at Neiman Marcus and they stayed at the Hemsley Palace and everything. So they said, would you like to come with us? And I was like, oh, this is going to be so awesome. So they decided to bring me out here. And they took me down to FIT. And I got a uh, taste of New York City. Yeah. And they had me stay at the Hemsley Palace and stuff. But then they also showed me the tough love. And they said, we're going to put you on the subway. And you want to okay. go to the career class, the orientation, mm -hmm. to see what the fashion industry is about? And I was like, yes. And they said, we're going to put you on the subway. Oh, and I wow. said, why don't you catch a cab? They said, no, you need to learn to become a real New Yorker. I said, oh, my goodness. So they taught me how to ride the subway. I had never seen a subway. Uh, never seen in Colorado. We don't have subways. So I never saw a subway in my life. Mm -hmm. So they took me and put me by myself on a subway. And I had to catch the subway all the way from the Hemsley Palace. Wow. And I was the... Uh, 15 years old, I was I was frightened to death, but I couldn't look scared because they said you have to look like you're tough so you can fit in with New York City or you're going to yeah. get snatched or robbed or killed. You know so what I need you to do, though? You know what I need yeah. you to do? Not to yeah. cut you off. I got a guy coming up on Monday, right? Yeah. He might be a guy that you might want to connect to. Okay. Because he does, he's a movie director, too. Yeah. But his relationships... He's he's running a, um, an ad right now. Um, uh, he just he just inboxed me, but he's coming on on Monday. Nice. So okay. he's a guy that knows uh, Lisa Ray. Nice. Uh, Vivica Fox. So like okay. I told you, I'm not just dwelling on um, sports. I got okay. a couple people that are street legends, and nice. they want to push their apparel and all that kind of stuff. Like I okay. got that. I got a couple NBA guys that nice. said they would do it um, because I, I, I'm really a basketball player, too. Nice. I, well, I used to play basketball, but I yeah. played it. I played it with Division One players and people that went on to play pro. So, awesome. yeah. So, I, I, you know, between that and music, you know, I can just reach out to people. Plus, it's always somebody that got a story. And once yes. they see my platform, they're going to yeah. see, oh. He, I might be on the phone, but the program is not on the phone. You yeah. know what I mean? So that was one of the reasons why I did it this way, because yeah. I know a lot of people take a phone and then add another. And I keep telling people that's really a phone call. OK, got you. Got you. That's what it really is. It's a phone call. It's just that yeah. you can go live, you know, that's so. So I, I, I said, if I do it, I, I, you know, I know a little bit about graphics and, you know, eventually you're going to see the, the, the graphics that's, uh, you know, animated nice. and I like because I have all the programs. But the point is, you know, if I'm going to do it, I got to do it a different way. So, okay. you know, my YouTube is funny because, you know, uh, I know they they paying attention because yeah. you know I went. I was I was on the like the little battle rapper site yeah. and and I did a couple of documentaries of it. But with this this program, I can actually just put my face. It actually like you had an option, right? Yeah. That option could have just been your Facebook page. Yeah. Face and it just would have, you know, showed like yeah. a, a wave, which awesome. is hard. So awesome. with that in mind, I could do recordings and and nice. do documentaries on certain things and. So, and, and the microphone I got is a SM7B, so it's a really good mic. Awesome. You know, so wow. so I know about equipment, too. So that was when another get, thing. When we get this zoo, the zoo together that I was telling you about, the petting zoo and stuff, 
I will uh, contact you and we'll do some interviews with you and people can see the broadcast of the wild exotic animals that we're going to be shipping in from Egypt and from Africa. And then, wow. you know, see them in Florida and they'll see them on your show. I'd, I'd love to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You just, you just let me know. And, um, yeah. and by that time I've been and figured out how to show yeah. the video with, cause you know, it's a way to show the video and actually wow. have it on it. So, awesome. you know, yeah. So the program is, is capable of doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, awesome. yeah, definitely. You know, because that's something that that's never been, you know, really. Yeah. That's not normal. You know, that's not normal. <laughs> you know? So, so it's obviously, and I saw a picture where you were actually in Egypt. I saw yeah. pyramids. Yes, I lived by the pyramids. Oh my God, I love the pyramids. I lived by the Giza pyramids. I'd wake up every morning with Hazra, and yeah. the um, the workers would come and they would make us breakfast. And yeah. we'd have Egyptian tea, and we would just be sitting there looking at those pyramids. We were in love with those pyramids. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, I, I was like, "Wow, she's <laughs> literally in Egypt." You know, yeah. some people say, you know, they take a picture. Like I would just take a picture and fake it. <laughs> you know, you know. And but we, and we made a movie by the Abyssinian pyramids as well, and we also were on the Red Sea, like what's in the Bible. And yeah. we rented the ship, and we were the only people out there besides the military. Oh, my God. It was just like heaven. And we went to Sharm el Sheikh. I saw the Mount Sinai Desert. Yeah. Um, I bought well, you a, got a lot of, You got a lot of power, though. You, you got to have a lot of power. <laughs> in order to, you talking about shutting something down there, a pyramid. And, you know, <laughs> we can't even get the... Um, we can't even get the water plug screwed. <laughs> unscrew the water plug. Well, I'm at... You know, so, you know the little thing that they just go like this and just turn it on. We, we can't even get that. You talk about shutting down a pyramid, and, you know. So, and, oh my God, it was just phenom It was just phenomenal. I saw Tudin Commons, twenty-four karat gold coffin. Wow. Oh, twenty-four karat gold, twenty-eight karat gold. Uh, oh my God! One day you just got to take a trip there. It's like a magical place. Um, yeah. I purchased a camel there. Um, the owner of a hotel walks my camel in the Abyssinian Desert every day. The camel was a baby. He's getting big and strong. Um, I've made, I've had custom made jewelry from a uh, family that has been making um, jewelry since since the beginning, since the pharaohs. I, I met old old families, royal families that were connected to. The I, I can believe you know, you're talking about. You're talking about the religion, religion out yeah. there. It was, you know. it was just very spiritual. Just no, oh, yeah. oh, I know. It, it had to be. <laughs> it's got to be out there. It's 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 totally different. Remember, it's okay. sand and pyramids and yes. And I can only I can't even imagine because I you know I've never been in a place, but but we've seen the yes. pictures. We've seen people shoot movies in that yes. type of setting. Yes. So I mean I wouldn't I wouldn't know anything about that for real, but I, got but you. I yeah. seen it. It was beautiful on, on TV. Yeah, yeah, I'm quite sure. I mean, one of a kind yeah. pictures because those are not normal pictures. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I even um, was in uh, the Mediterranean Sea on about five different ships that I I had chartered. You know, I paid somebody to take us out there, and uh, yeah. my God. I, I saw these places that are in the Bible and the Bible was so accurate about these places. It was mind blowing. And the Pharaonic culture is over 5,000 years old. And I got to see all. Oh these yeah. Things. You're talking about BC and you're yeah. dealing with the and, BC and it's mummies and, yeah, and, and I, all I that type of stuff. They just found a whole new set of mummies that they put in the museum. And, you know, there was some heavy duty stuff going on with, Russian gangsters that I met and oh Bill man, Curry you do it all. <laughs> you in the middle of everything. Bears, <laughs> Russian gangsters, 50 <laughs> shit. What else? You get everybody and around you. Some 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 scary person was asking me to partner in illegal crime and, and bring um stuff that was dug out the desert from the pharaonic culture oh, over yeah, here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said, well, no, thank you. No one thing, thing one thing about crime. One thing I know about crime. Crime is everywhere. Yes. 
And True. people need to understand that crime is actually everywhere. Oh, yes. There's no unsafe, even if it ain't no crime, there's some illegal doing. Yes. You know, so nobody is really 100% safe. You don't know because you, you see it even on TV sometimes. Yeah. Every now and again, you see the suburbs, somebody done snapped out and yes. did something catastrophic. So, oh, yes. You know, so but but I, I always tell everybody that's spiritual because, you know, um, you know, it depends on who the parents are and did they put the real time in with with that child or whatever. Because, yeah. you know, they could develop something that they don't even know is coming. And the next thing you know, boom, I can't believe they did that because they just thought money was right. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah, you know, so money right. was good. And but. Yeah. Good people have money and yeah. you know y'all crazy too. <laughs> no, you're right. There was a very rich man down the street from here who killed his uh, daughter in law. He, mm -hmm. They had money, money, and uh, killed her. And they he went and disappeared into the Harriman Forest. And the sheriffs and the state police, the FBI, no one could find this man. He disappeared without a trace. So you're right. No, 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 no. That's not what that is. <laughs> That's not what that is. If you pay enough people, I all of a you. sudden, <laughs> I didn't see him. <laughs> he give me a half a million. I didn't see you neither. <laughs> you know, I understand you. I <laughs> yeah, so I don't ever think that that does. Once, once I told you there's crime everywhere. Right. There's illegal doings everywhere. You're right. It's just that when you're on a hierarchy of paper, the Got only it. thing is they know how to hide you a little bit longer. They know how to delay the case a little longer. There you go. You there know, you go. so because when you ain't got no money, the first <laughs> thing they're gonna say is right there. Get <laughs> you're you right. going in there. You going right in there. You know, so if you ain't got no money, you going right. <laughs> Right over there in that cell. Right. I so, understand you. Yeah, yeah. So I've never. See, one thing about me is, like I told you, I'm truly a businessman and I understand the intellectual property. That is that is the uh, thing that's not being, you know, they don't teach that. Yeah. That has to be a gift. And then you got to start putting it together and then it has to make sense. So, yes. you know, some people are fortunate like you who had a parent that had trust funds or whatever the case was. So yeah, you know, I know what I'm talking about, right, right. you know, you know, inherited money, bloodline. Right. So, you know, uh, of course, everybody's not on that journey. Gotcha. There's only a few, you know, there are, there are only a few that actually have that. And it, it's just a fortunate thing. Yeah. That you know, some people have it for them, yeah. but thing. you can take yeah. that. Like I, I met a guy who was an actual lottery winner. Wow. Now, yeah, let me tell you something. He was wilding out, you know, because I was DJing, so I would know. He would come bring twenty people, and literally buy the bar out, and wow. and he said he was like this every weekend, ever since he won that money. So it was like, wow. I mean, even if you give somebody some money, they mm -hmm. got an opportunity to phase out. Yeah. You, you can help people, but help them with buying something that's going to supply them with a job for as yeah. long as you can keep it, because you might can keep it forever. So, right. you know, uh, it's better to help them from that standpoint than to yeah. keep giving them liquor and you hanging out with the girls. And, right. you know, it's just better if you do it the right way. But right. I'm telling you, just because a person, you know, is inherited money, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be on the right course because yeah. plenty of people have lost money. Plenty of people um, have wasted money. And then there's people out here literally that can't eat. Yes. They can't walk. Yes. They can't they can't see. Some of them yeah. are deformed. There's all types right. of things going on. And you lose hindsight because you're out here having yeah. a good time. 
That's right. But you got to always remember that there's always somebody that you could have helped. I don't right. care if you took $50 yeah. and put it in somebody's pocket. Yeah. Guess what? That's a great deed in life. So okay. while you're out, wilding out, it is not, you know, it's not, it shouldn't be hard for you to say, you know what? Especially if you're playing with some millions, it's right. not hard for you to drop a hundred right. in somebody who had no how. You're not even supplying them with a house. You're giving right. them some sort of fortune. That's it for the moment. That's right. And I just and and and, and I have actually been around people that was heartless like that. Right. You know, and you'd be surprised how it's still about them, 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 them. Yeah. Them, 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 them. And yeah. if you let them keep talking, they'll talk about anybody without any money or anybody not in a good position. It's very you know, So, yeah. So, you know. I was hanging out with the richest of the rich people in um, Egypt, and they had palaces and villas, and everything's made out of marble and, yeah. you know, spiral stairs and in ground pools and by the beach. and servants and we'd be driving in their Mercedes and stuff and they would um it just hurt it just hurt my heart. People would be knocking on the window. Oh so you did a you did an Egyptian pull up. <laughs> y'all you know, you know, say yeah we had Mercedes and we just pulled up on them. I mean not pulled up like the streets would say but <laughs> and they're knocking on the windows and I was in the back seat everybody was driving me around. And uh, it was just so devastating because people people were asking me for money, and I purposely purposely would go and get a lot of money, and I would uh, turn it into one dollar American bills, which equal fifteen to sixteen of their Egyptian. Well, you know, bills. I got a cat. I just want you since you in that that great mindset and frame. I hope you see mine right there. It's a <laughs> cash app, Scarface. <laughs> <Lock. laughs> And trust me, it's for a needy cause. <laughs> I will check into it. <laughs> yeah, you need to check into that while you, because I need to keep that brain going the right way. Because I know when I get off this phone, you might be doing one of more. He's trying to get me for a couple of hours. <laughs> but uh, you know, I um, it you know, I was giving out a lot of money to people who had no shoes on. Uh, they were filthy. Um, they had torn up clothes. They looked like they were ravenous for food. You can see hunger in the eyes. It was not yeah. a kind of job. And the rich people I was with didn't even give them one Egyptian pound. And it just broke my it just broke my my spirit. I was so sad. And they said, you know, don't worry about those people. There's always gonna be poor people in the world. I said, it's not gonna hurt you to give them one dollar of your money. And these people were making bank. I mean, they weren't your average Egyptians. These people we're like going into <laughs> very expensive places and spending thousands of dollars. So there's no reason to be so greedy. Well, and, you know, that that's the heart sometimes of greed. Yeah. See, once it goes to greed, once it goes to greed, it's actually, it's a sickness at that point, but they don't wow. understand that. They just look at it like, no, I just, I just didn't want to give it to them. I mean, it's too many of them and, and you know, they should have had a job. That's what they're going yeah, to say. Yeah. It, it, it broke my heart. There was like a 12 year old um, child, Egyptian man, a little boy. And, you know, I just finished shopping with Hazra Budaram. We were in a store with two security, you know, security guys. And we had shopped for all these beautiful Galabayas and spent all this money yeah. for a photo shoot. And uh, the kid started running behind me as I was walking to the car. And I didn't have any cash on me because I spent everything for the day. And so I asked my uh, driver, could he please give him, you know, a couple of dollars? And yeah. he got very angry at me and said, I'll do it. He said, but you better hurry up and get in this car. He said, before there's another line here again. And I said, okay. So then the kid. Ooh, like, you no, said uh, another me. line here. What do you mean? Uh, line meaning like, you know. Sometimes I'd be passing out a little money and there would be a line oh, of people that would run up. Oh, okay. Yeah, be get a line okay. Some money. But they were really hungry. I wasn't going to just leave somebody on the street. 
starving. Like, what the hell? And they don't have social security and, you know, like food stamp. They don't have a, a social program for poor people. So. Yeah, they don't have a program, you know. But that's the country. They, you know, you know yeah, that, right? And, the country yeah, and, they, that. and they told me, oh, well, we give out free food during Ramadan. And I'm like, but that's only one one month out of the year. Like, what the hell? These people have to eat something. And, you know, if you're uneducated and you can't speak English, you know, you don't get any opportunities. And, you know, you know how many people I saw in black hijab sitting on the street corners, um, passing out tissues, and they were widows like me, and they didn't have a penny in their pocket, and they hadn't eaten in two and three days. That that disturbed me. Oh, wow. Yeah. I think some of the Egyptian, the rich Egyptians were embarrassed about it, and they told me, Oh, well, there's always going to be poor people in the world. You never really get used to it. And I said, well, yeah, there are poor people, but, you know, it's not going to. You know, you know, you know what, though? It was the yeah. probably the way they said it. Yeah. It probably the way they said it is actually in scriptures. Yeah, that, that's it's, true. It's actually in scriptures. Some will have, some won't. That's it's not true. exactly like that, but yeah, it will, it will say that. And, um, you know, some people will have a rougher journey than others, you know. Of course, me and you have a different lifestyle. Yes. You're living the way you're living. Me, I'm a grinder, but I'm very educated. Yeah. And um and and believe it or not, knowledge is actually power. So if you have some sort of knowledge, people don't understand that's the most powerful thing to know, especially if you can do it on a spiritual level as well. You know, um, because that's the difference between a person that's that's you know out here just searching and they you know sometimes they run away from the truth right and a lot of people don't like the truth right. they like a lie because the lie sounds so good right but the truth right. hurts yes so you know uh you you run through that in life now you know um yeah. where where people are you know they love the soothing but they don't want to hear what, what, what it really is. You know? Thank you. Thank you. you know, what it really is. So, you know, it's good that you were out there um, contributing to yeah. their society. It's, it's just an unfortunate thing that, you know, uh, people of their own society uh, don't have the same heart. You know, sometimes your, your heart can get real cold and you don't even know it. So, you know, at, at one time in everybody's life, you know, they yeah. probably given something to somebody. Sure. But then it was a couple of days like you really just didn't want to do it. Got you. Understand. You know, and, and and it's sad, but I think that's a ninety nine percent tile thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, you know, if you poor and you giving up, there's a reward to that. You know, there's always yeah. gonna be a reward to that. You know. Um, yeah. But anyway, you've talked yeah. about um, all the other things earlier. Yeah. Okay. After the, the true phase of COVID-19, um, hopefully they will have this thing resolved. I hope what, so. will, what would, what are you doing? Because I know it seems like you're playing with something serious financially. So I know what, what, what would be the big bang for you coming out of a, Complete quarantine. The air is good again. What will be your boom? Because I know you're going to be planning something. <laughs> I uh, created a uh, nonprofit uh, entity recently, and we're creating an NGO. Um, I my goal is to make sure. I know it might sound quite silly to you, but my goal is to make sure that there are no more people with walking around barefoot. I see people when I go to Florida to rich areas, Daytona Beach, um, Key West, where there's a lot of money, um, South Florida, you'll see the homeless people sitting in the parking lots when you're going through the drive through to get some food in an emergency and yeah. sitting out there with no shoes on. And it's very disturbing and they're dirty. And, you know, here in America, um, we can th- we can feed the world three times over. We have so much food here and so much wealth. Um, yeah. Nobody should not have a pair but of there's, shoes there's, on. There's structure. There's structure here. Yeah. There's structure. Yeah. 
And a lot of them I gave money to in Florida, I asked them, well, you know, why don't you contact your congressman or your senator and let them know that you're out here hungry on the corner? And they said, there's no social programs here. I said, what do you mean? They said, this is, uh, you know, a Republican place. And I said, well, what are you, Democrat, Republican? They said, well, we're Republicans. And I'm like, well, you don't have any shoes on your feet. Yeah. You're struggling to pay your light bill and you're a Republican. I said, you need to go contact Donald Trump and let him know, look, I voted for you. Please help me out. You Listen, know? Now, do you really think that's going to work? Listen, <laughs> you're going to walk up, hey, Donald, <laughs> I need a couple of dollars. <laughs> he's going to look at you like, he's going to move his little hair to the side. <laughs> All right. We're going to I work on it like, look, after we come off recess because <laughs> they go on recess every 30 days anyway. So uh, uh, I just know so many Republicans and Democrats and liberals. I filled up their refrigerators. I mean, I know a lot of people who are struggling and it doesn't make any sense. Some of them have master degrees. It doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. People try to associate being poor with being lazy. No, it just means you didn't have a, a good opportunity in your life. It, it, you know, it doesn't mean that you're lazy. I know a lot of hardworking people. And no, 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 no. There are yeah. definitely people. Uh, yeah. But, but I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. That what they do to, like, Black men, yeah. right, yeah. is that they don't create their opportunity. See, the opportunity is not there as much for the black man to just use his hands as a worker. You're you know, right. every day they're trying to figure out some type of machine to get right. rid of a human being. Amen. They talking about a selfless car. Well, wouldn't that hurt the taxi? Wouldn't that hurt yes. everything that that, uh, you know, manual labor that would hurt the economy? Yes, it would. You yes, know, because that will come back as economy, economic yes. job fair, you know. Right. So why are you continuously making things that will deplete man yeah. of actually working? Right. And then if, if you take away, because most men are physical, physically yeah. working. Most yeah. women are desks behind desks. They're not... Not too many of them are physically, but you know, you'll see some out there doing the streets and stuff like that, but yeah. not many. So right. the physicality, hand build up everything is that that's men. So right. I think the only way it hurts is when everybody lose their job. It seems like because if one race loses it, the other race is not going to care because right. they're good. Right. But let let the you know let the rug come from under them right we need to come together so right. it's too hard to manifest and you can't even be a man in your house if you ain't making no money true because that, that's a part of the religious is in the yeah. bible it's when yeah. whatever you read it says the man should support his family it's so true. if he can't support his family and but you got all types of little sanctions to stop what they call the, which I always tell everybody, I never listen to that word minority. Because for one, you're calling anybody with color a minority. Yes, they are. You know, so, but most of the world is not minority because most of the world have a color. Amen. Amen. So, you know, and then that is a the derogatory word anyway, really created. Oh, you're a minority. What? What is you calling me a minority? Well, no, I'm not no minority. I'm a human being. Right, right. You know, in case you didn't know, in the image of God, because that's how it came. Right. You know, so, you know, you got a lot of people that, but this is because these people get this money. Yeah, you're right. And they get this money and they forget. They forget. That do you know that there is actually scriptures that tells you, first of all, nobody owns anything. Yes. Yeah. It belongs to God. Yeah. So, you know, that right there is not preached. They don't want you to know that. 
you know, right. oh no, it's got black and white. You gotta own this, you know, and get this land. <laughs> you know? Right. You gotta get this. No, you don't own nothing. And they don't own nothing. Right. But Correct. it's it's that's what they teach. That that's what they want you to know. Right. Makes sense. You get it? Well, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. So you I, never I, said what's your boom? What's gonna be the boom for you? You know, oh, I know no. you're gonna do some entertainment, you know, you're <laughs> gonna go get Drake or somebody. <laughs> so what what I'm planning now is I'm planning on opening a COVID-friendly Playland. Uh, oh. I'm going to reinvent the wheel because, you know, I've talked to many scientists who are telling me COVID's going to be here for another 100 years. So if this is really the case, this is the new life for us. So we have to reinvent the wheel. I'm a movie producer. I'm purchasing a large amount of property so that I can create... Um, drive-in movie theater um okay. I test research with the bank they thought it was a brilliant idea um i went and looked at the drive-in movie theaters here after i came back from egypt and okay. so these these um these drive-in movie theaters were packed warwick new york middletown new york was reopened um and even at the warwick drive-in they were selling a hundred dollars a ticket uh per car for uh, Drake Sheldon, uh, it was a Sheldon Drake. Um, Some of the country guy, right? A country guy and uh, Gwen Stefani. Oh, uh, I think the, that's the guy on um, American Idol, right? Yeah, yeah, one of those. Uh, one of those uh, yeah, one of them shows, Yeah, yeah, and uh, Gwen Stefani singing on the drive-in movie screen, and they were packed. It was sold out. I said, "What in the world?" So when I saw this. People are so desperate to be outside and have a little fun. Yeah. Um, I said, "My God, this is this this is a gold mine. This is the new gold mine." So I decided I'm going to open a drive-in movie theater, and then you know I applied to own a Chick Fil A, and you only need ten thousand dollars to open a Chick Fil A. I just want to open a drive-through Chick Fil A because of COVID, and I'm looking at all the restaurants the fast food restaurants just sitting in a line upstate new york like a whole hour waiting for someone to give you a cheeseburger what a so, man it's going yeah suffocating it's it's my it's mind-blowing so i realized okay we have to create uh streams of wealth through covid friendly fun places and all these families are out here constantly in drive throughs trying to get a like a Kennedy or was it KFC fried chicken or Wendy's, whatever is going on. So you yeah. know I want to open, you know, one of those in the drive a drive through window and have somebody or a couple of people working there and people at the drive in and then have a little stage for the people who want to come and perform live in front of the drive in movie theater before the before the movies start. Um, you know, yeah. so that's Create a COVID-friendly fun land, and um, they're gonna bring some exotic animals over here, and you know they're gonna uh, have a petting zoo and a little, you know, polite uh, animal-friendly. I hope it ain't gonna be show. one of them bears. <laughs> circus show. The ones yeah, y'all so can't control. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is what we're planning now. This is what we're planning now. This is what I'm planning now. And I'm just trying to bring build my legacy also. Um, I'm going to be a founding member of a school in, in Nigeria. And yeah. I'm also going to open an entertainment media platform there for the yeah. knowledge students. Because in uh, Africa yeah, and India is where all the movies make the biggest amount of sales. You know, they have a huge yeah. population. And Nollywood and Bollywood love to watch movies. So yeah. I'm going to put a little platform over at that school where they're teaching um, sewing and yeah. wood, woodwork, woodcraft shops and mm -hmm. all this stuff. See this guy right here? He, he, um, I just showed the banner right there. His name is Brian Harrison. But he, yeah. was, a, he, he, he was a in a legendary rap group in the 90s. Nice. Um, they were called Hundred X. I'm Mike, and you know, trust me, they can go in, you know. And they they were they were hot. 
they were hot. Right. They were killing it right here in Philly. So I might wow. try to put that together too for you. You know, right. who knows? Y'all might be able to, you know, bring bring them up there bring and a concert for me. Yeah, that yeah, would be bring, awesome. Bring them up there and let them go ahead and blaze it. You know, because they be awesome. they still got the talent and and like I said, their music. You know, was 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 influential in Philadelphia. Mustafa, that's I see you, Mustafa. But anyway, back to you. You know, so you know. Um, Shout out okay. to Mustafa. There you go, Mustafa. <laughs> Shout out to Mustafa. And um, you know, um, one hundred X X X. He know what I'm talking about. That's yeah. So um, shout out to Brian Harrison. <laughs> that's it, Mustafa. Mustafa. Yeah. So anyway, um, it sounds like you're going to put something really big. Who knows? I might can um help you uh you know do bring somebody up there like I, I you didn't see the um the girl that I had on here yesterday but oh, I told her I told her and she definitely can go up there and and awesome. um you know uh, kill it um also um so, but it's a lot of things that a lot of people I know right here in the city and um like I said I think you're 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 on you, you know you you have a heart so if you got a heart then you know you're not you're not a bad human being. You know, there's some bad people out here. You know, they they, they are, hard. I, mean, I was raised by civil rights activists, and um, they were they were people that uh, everybody thought was Native American and white. And I'm like, no, we're African American. And people were like, well, why would you say that? You don't have to um, say that. I said, because I'm proud. I'm black and proud, and there's nothing wrong with being African American. And some people will say, well, at least the Minicano. And I'm like, no, I'm African American. Yeah. So then I break down the genetic DNA of the German ancestry and the Irish ancestry, which is. Oh, they, they, they don't, they don't want to hear that, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just look at you like, and then, you know, I always tell people anyway, it, the whole system jacked up because there was a whole lot of bad stuff going on back in the day. And y'all try to act like nothing going on, nothing happened, you know, because, you know, they'll, they'll try to say that, oh, Oh, but this is the new world. You didn't live that life. Well, guess what? Our parents did, and, and parents ancestors did, did and yeah. it wasn't good. So y'all not gonna sit here and try to, you know, Thank dismiss you. it. It's called dismissal. Thank you. And I get so tired of that dismissal BS. Um, a lot but of them. Got my when I started sharing that I will now vote for Biden because of. Um, the black woman that's going to be in office that people got upset at me and sending me inbox messages, you know, yeah. oh, don't vote for those evil devils. Oh, she's not black anyway. I mean, it's so sad. I don't tell anybody who to vote for. You don't get to tell me who to vote for. You, oh, know? Yeah, yeah. you know, but you, you know, one thing you're going to learn in life is that people have an opinion and even though they got their own opinion, guess what? Yeah, there's some of them gonna want to want you to know who I think you should vote for. Got you. You know, gotcha. so I mean, this this whole election is going to be interesting because I'm tell you, I believe that Donald Trump is going to do something really significant. Got gotcha. you. Because he has to do something because you know Biden has added Kamala. Yes. And she is. Wrecking shop. Yes. So I still say he's got to put something together. And see, what I tried to tell somebody last night is don't ever think that he never gave nothing to black people yeah. because right. he did. And that, yeah. you know, you know, of course, they go by everything that, you know, his mannerism and how he yeah. how he puts it and but yeah. he he has actually done some good I for black people. I got you. I got so you. So it's going to be interesting. They've got Kamala, but he's still in control. So he could pull off something. He might yeah. he might instate the reparations. Yeah. Yeah. If, if he good. does that. Yeah. Who's going to beat that? Thank you. Nobody. Nobody. So I'm, I'm doing a documentary on the slave castle. Um, there's an African book author and movie producer who uh, dedicated a book about Africa to me. And I'm going over to that Ghanaian slave castle and I'm going to do a documentary about 
how our ancestors were shipped over here and they were given last rites before they were shackled and put on the uh, on the ship to come over here to work for the Europeans. And, you know, the, the, the bones... The stories will go on and on, though. I think yeah. the stories will go on and on when it comes to history. And yeah. there are... There are one thing about history, I, I know this for a fact, they only going to tell you what they want you to know, but you really got to go and find the truth. Right. And you're not going to find the truth on based on some of the books that they put out. So, yeah. you know, you know, if you go to the, to the library, you might get lucky and get the real yeah. book. You yeah. might, you might, yeah. but you're going to have to really search um, in order to get the truth. Okay. So, I'm going to say, I want to end it on this one. Yes. What was the biggest event you ever threw? Oh, my goodness. Two Chains. Uh, I was part of the Two Chains concert in uh, Hudson Valley. And in Hudson Valley, okay. In Hudson Valley. And um, it was over 4,000 people that showed up to that event. Okay. And I had put about four different artists on that stage. And oh, I got up. all those artists to open for him. And my artists were paid thousands of dollars. People bought tickets from them. And yeah. they also got paid to be on a song and promoted on his stage. And I was oh, just wow. happy. Everybody, all of us got money. So it's yeah. obvious you got PR. You got good PR work. Yeah. 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 yeah it was that's, awesome. a, that's a PR move right there. See, you think yeah. I ain't know all that, didn't you? <laughs> I mean, no, I tell you, ins and outs of this stuff, it's, it's, that's a PR. So you must got a pretty good PR because to get him to come, you know, yeah. remember, and I know I, you got to give him half and then, <laughs> then they show up. $100,000. He, he was paid $100,000 from some friends, associates, business associates. Yeah. yeah. Came out there and he did his thing and, you know, uh, it was just awesome. And it was okay. beautiful seeing young, young people who weren't even – maybe born yet, who were singing his old songs from back in the day and, and dancing like he used to dance. And I, my mind was blown. I was like, this is awesome. The unity was wow. so awesome. And the energy and the vibration, it was such a high vibration. Yeah. And there were no killings, even though there was a whole bunch of bloods there, a whole bunch of cribs. Um, yeah. MS-13, everybody was there, but everybody was just grooving to the music. And it was just awesome to see everybody together. No violence, and everybody got paid. It was just the most happiest time of my life in entertainment. So, okay. it was a peaceful night. All yeah. right, so you 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 definitely have put the skin in the game as far as the entertainment. Like I said, I was you know we conversed a little bit through a year yeah. almost, like you know. Yeah. So, and but I always was telling you, man, I kept sending you the inbox. I said, oh, I'm gonna do a podcast and get yeah. that going on, and but um. What I did though, when when everything tightened up and locked down, I actually just started getting all the things that I needed, um, as far as you know, the microphone and you know, because yeah. I I'm, I know about studio stuff anyway, so yeah. um, added that and then I put it together. So I did come through. I told yeah. everybody that I was doing it, it and awesome. I, I'm not and I'm not done because there are some graphical <laughs> things that I'm going to put together. Wow, you're gonna be like wow. <laughs> this guy is not playing. But anyway, it's been a great Can I give a big shout out to Hakeem Green? Um, I had a lot of artists open for him. I hired him. And, Hakeem um, Green. Hakeem Green. Hakeem okay. Green. Ha uh, Hakeem Green. Ha I got you. Yeah, yeah from, uh, you know, old school boom back rap. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah, Hakeem professor Green. at NYU. Okay. And now Florida. And he was from that really good boom bap rap song, uh, which oh, okay. I'll you. Uh, real, real good stuff from back in the day. And it was, I was so proud of him. He was 50 plus years old and still had it. And all the cameras were in his face. And Aiden yeah. the General was there as the host of my show in oh, Manhattan. Okay. And all the youth were still vibing to his music. And he was making music before some of those kids were even born. Hakeem oh, okay. ha Green. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I would like to thank you for coming out to my Facebook Live. Thank SL you. 
digital media podcast. It's movie director, record label owner, and she does concerts too. We got to put all this stuff together. We got to come up with one word. <laughs> Lena Shockley, don't forget, look into my little green, my little green thing right there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then, you know, have a good one. Have a blessed Thank night. You. Okay. Keep going. Thank you. Salute. All right. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.